टूडे वी विल स्टडी अबाउट रेन्यूला सो रेन्यूला डेराइव इट्स नेम आफ्टर द वर्ड राना विच इज अ लेटिन वर्ड मीनिंग फ्रॉग सो वाई इट इज नेम्ड आफ्टर राना बिकॉज ऑफ द मॉर्फोलॉजिकल अपियरेंस ऑफ द लीजन रिजेंबल्स सबलिंगल ब्लैब्स इन फ्रॉग्स माउथ सो द फिजिकल अपियरेंस ऑफ बोथ ऑफ दीज रिजेंबल्स बिकॉज ऑफ विच रेन्यूला वॉज गिवन इट्स नेम आफ्टर द लेटिन वर्ल्ड राना रेन्यूलाज आर म्यूकस रिटेंशन सिस्ट्स अराइजिंग फ्रॉम सबलिंगल ग्लैंड और माइनर सेलाइबरी ग्लैंड एंड दे आर क्लासिफाइड बेस्ड ऑन देर एक्सटेंट इन टू सिंपल रेन्यूलाज एंड प्लंगिंग रेन्यूलाज सिंपल रेन्यूलाज आर कन्फाइंड टू जस्ट द सबलिंगल स्पेस एंड द प्लंजिंग रेन्यूलाज एक्सटेंड बाय एक्स्ट्रा विजिटिंग इन टू सब मेंडिबुलर स्पेस दे कैन एक्स्ट्रा विजिट बाय टू पाथवेज दे कैन आई द एक्स्ट्रा विजिट थ्रू द माइलोहाइड मसल डिफेक्ट विच इज ऑल्सो नोन एज माइलोहाइड बॉटोनियर और द सेकेंड पाथवे अलॉन्ग द पोस्टीरियर एज ऑफ माइलोहाइड मसल सिंस दे आर एक्सटेंडिंग बाय एक्स्ट्रा विजिशन दे आर सूडोसिस वाइल सिंपल रेन्यूलाज आर ट्रू सिस्ट मीनिंग सिंपल रेन्यूलाज आर लाइंड बाय epithelial cells while plunging granulas are not lined by epithelial cells they are just extra vegetations and that is why they are pseudocysts because of the extra vegetation of plunging granulas into the submandibular space they give a specific imaging sign known as tail sign in which granulas are seen as small tail which extends into sublingual space via the submandibular space you must be now wondering how do ranulas present clinically so clinically they appear as painless swelling in the floor of mouth they are painful only and only when they get infected and the mean age of ranulas is in the 30s so now coming to the imaging appearance of ranulas so on usg they appear as cystic anechoic lesion with or without internal echoes and thin walls they can have thick walls in case they are infected now next investigation is ct scan in ct scan they appears again cystic hypodense thin wall lesion typically located in sublingual space or can be seen extending into submandibular space in mri they are typically t1 hypo intense t2 hyper intense lesions seen in sublingual space and extending may or may not be extending into submandibular space and again they can be thick walled when infected now what are the differential diagnosis of ranulas so uh, the first differential is dermoid cyst second is epidermoid cyst so how will you exclude dermoid cyst so dermoid cyst you will see a fatty component within and in epidermoid cyst on mri you will see typically diffusion restriction so fluid intensity cyst with diffusion restriction is an epidermoid cyst not a ranula third differential is lymphatic malformation lymphatic malformations are multilocular and septated while ranula is always unilocular lymphatic malformations have fluid flow levels while ranulas do not tend to have fluid flow levels fourth differential is second brachial cleft cyst so second brachial cyst are also seen in submandibular space near the angle of mandible but how will you differentiate it from the ranula so ranula will have its extension into sublingual space while a brachial cleft cyst will be exclusively in submandibular space and not be seen extending into sublingual space second brachial cleft cyst will displace the submandibular gland anteriorly while ranula will displace the submandibular gland laterally so these four are the differential diagnosis of ranula another less common differential is necrotic tongue tumor so um, you can differentiate it by looking at the walls so walls will be thick and irregular while walls of ranula are smooth and not irregular so now coming to the treatment options for ranula so most effective treatment for ranula is 
complete resection of the renula along with obstructed sublingual gland. This prevents recurrence as we have resected the renula as well as the gland from which it was arising. Second option is sclerotherapy. So we have few sclerotherapy as agents which we can inject to reduce the renula. So first is bleomycin and second one is OK432. And third less common and now not used option is cyst aspiration. It is not used nowadays because of its high recurrence rate.